but you would expect to find 8,000 mummified corpses. But deep inside Palermo's Capuchin catacombs are the remnants of a bizarre and secretive process used to preserve the dead for eternity. Some have never been photographed. Most appear here on television for the very first time. Palermo, Sicily. The Capuchin Catacombs. Four centuries of death on display. I wouldn't go down there unless you want to have nightmares for the rest of your life. I warn you, don't go down there. We have noticed that everyone who comes here leaves changed forever. Those are real bodies. The bodies of over 8,000 souls line the corridors of the catacombs. When they first built this monastery, one of the problems that came up was what to do with the dead. Remember at the time it was important to the living to face the dead. And this visual reminder helped them reflect on their own mortality. The Capuchin order believed strongly that the body should be preserved for the coming resurrection. And they developed a highly successful mummification process. And although Capuchin relics can be seen throughout Italy, nowhere was the process more successful or more popular than it is here in Palermo. The secret to the embalming process is hidden in the depths of the catacombs. This is one of the 30 drying chambers. In here, on these large grills, there is room for six or seven corpses. The room was sealed for eight months while the corpses drained. Then they were washed with vinegar and stuffed with straw. Finally, they were dressed in their clothes and placed in the corridors of the catacombs. The catacombs were initially reserved for the monks, but later extended to dignitaries and patrons of the church. The corpses were carefully organized by class, gender, and age.
Throughout history, the catacombs have spawned many legends. During the Black Plague in Palermo, 40 monks were seen walking in procession in the middle of the night. When the Father Superior was asked why he had sent the monks out, he was amazed. No monks, he said, had left the monastery the night before. The people then understood that saints were buried in the catacombs and that they had manifested as spirits to do penance for the city in hopes of ending the plague. Mummification of the bodies stopped in 1860 when the process was outlawed by a Napoleonic decree. However, the catacombs received their most cherished saint in 1920 when the body of a little girl was brought in by her family. She had been mummified by a secret process which to this day remains a mystery even to the Capuchin monks. Up until recently, Rosalia's sister often came from Rome to visit her. She hadn't been able to create a relationship with Rosalia in life. In the catacombs, she was able to be touched by her in death. Among the visitors that come down into the catacombs, some people come unprepared and they have to turn back quickly because the experience is too upsetting. But I think for everybody, you can't come to the catacombs without being faced by the profound and personal question of who we are in life and the inescapable mystery that is awaiting all of us at the end of our lives. Magnolia Lane Plantation sounds beautiful. I don't even want to go in there. That's the dying room. A mother's worst nightmare. This used to be my house. That was not me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Are people in the house? And I'm feeling like he's right here, right next to us. Prison of lost souls. I just hear screams. It's very traumatic. Oh my gosh. 